importing a PDF file into Trimble field link. All right, so in the BIM world that we live in today, quite honestly, we still communicate to the field via paper. And paper plans are typically PDF format, so I'm going to show you how you can bring a PDF file into Trimble field link and use it for layout. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to More, and I'm going to go to Jobs and Manage, and I'm going to create a new TFL file. So I need to put it somewhere. So I'll go to my main job folder, which is Trimble Field Link back uh, forward slash jobs, and I'm going to give it a name. So I'm going to hit Create, and I don't want to call it New Job 3. I'm going to call it Importing PDF number 3, because I've done this a couple times, and I go ahead and hit Create. And what I've done is I've created a TFL file now, um, but we need to get the PDF file into it. So I'm going to go to More and Jobs, and I'm going to go to Import. Now we can import uh, several things into this, but I'm looking for the PDF file. So in this case, it happens to be Level Flow re Reflected Ceiling Plan of our Trimble uh, Phase 2 building. So I'm going to go ahead and select the PDF, and I'm going to get Import, and I need to know the scale factor. Now, I do know the scale factor because if I go to minimize here and I open up my drawing, typically uh, the scale is in the title block somewhere, eighth of an inch equals a foot, or it's down here under the, um, uh, the view uh, title, uh, eighth of an inch equals a foot. That's important because you have to bring it into the proper scale. So I'll go back into Trimble Field Link, and there it is, eighth of an inch per foot. I do have some other options, but this is the one that I need, so I'm going to go ahead and hit import. Now what our software is doing is we're converting this PDF file into what we call a BLDG file. BLDG files are basically geometry or background files that are native to Trimble Field Link. What it does is it takes the line work of the PDF, it turns it into geometry pieces that we can use with our software. All right, so the file's imported. That's great. I want to see what it looks like, so I'm going to go to More, and I'm going to go to Map, and that's what it looks like. Now, you'll notice, because I'm zoomed way out, some of the lines and things aren't necessarily showing up as, as they, they should, but as I zoom in, you'll notice that a lot of these shapes and pieces uh, start to materialize. And that's just a, a graphical interface thing that we do uh, with the BLDG file to keep that file light so that we're not showing you a ton of detail when you're zoomed way out. It just makes it a lot easier for our software to process and utilize that data. All right, so there's my PDF file. The next thing I need to do is I need to verify the scale. Even though it says it's an eighth of an inch, um, I always like to just double check things before I start creating a whole bunch of data and points. So in this particular example, the architect was nice enough to give us a little scale bar. And I can use this to verify that it did indeed come in at one eighth of an inch equals a foot. So to do that, I need to first go to Create, and I need to go to From Model. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create an endpoint on this line here and this line here. And it tells me I'm going to create two points. I can go in and I can put these into a specific layer and give them a name, but I really don't care. I just want to create two points, and then I can go to More and Compute to verify the scale. This should be 32 feet. So if I select my two points, Indeed it is, 32 feet. So now, not only have I told it to bring it in at an eighth of an inch per foot, but I've verified that it did bring it in at an eighth of an inch per foot, and that's very important. Okay, so I'll clear this out. The next thing I need to do is I need to start creating some points uh, that I can lay out on the job site. However, before I create those points, a very important step is to give myself some control points. Now. Control points are basically this. They're a, they're a point that I can select from the map or the drawing file that I can physically get to on the job site. That's very important because our instruments require control points to get set up. You basically have to shoot in at least two, if not three, control points. That establishes the instrument's position on the job site, and from there the instrument knows and uh, where you are and where you need to go to get get your layout done. So I'm going to lay out, or excuse me, I'm going to create some control points that I can use for layout. So again, I'm going to go back to create, and I'm going to go back, back to from model. And in this instance, 
a lot of times if the GCs give me control points, they're offset from a specific grid line or maybe a column or a, a concrete foundation corner. All right. I don't know if that exists on this job site, but what I do know is that there should be some concrete corners, there should be some columns, and I should be able to physically get to them. So I'm going with that assumption. So I'm going to create some control points based off of these columns. All right. So here's a steel column. I don't know what size it is. That's okay. Um, I'm going to go ahead and create not an endpoint or a midpoint, but an intersection. And I'm going to create that intersection right here on the face of that column where it intersects the grid line. All right, so there's one. I'm going to use this one here. There's another one. There's three. I need a minimum of two. I like to use three, but I don't like putting them in a straight line just in case that grid line starts to drift. Um, it wasn't installed properly, which happens. Um, so I'm going to come up here just to give myself a couple more options. All right, so there's another column right here. All right, so I've got about five control points that I can use. Um, so the next thing is I need to go to my input form button. I need to make sure that I call them appropriately. So I'm going to call it CP1 for control point one, and I call it center face of column. You can get as fancy as you want with this. And the layer, I want to keep it organized. Layer zero, um, I've already got a bunch of stuff on there. So let's see if we've got a control point layer. We don't, um, so I'll make one. So now I've got a layer for control points. Here they are. I hit create. There's my seven points, CP1, 2, 3, 4, etc. Okay, so now I've got all my control points in. However, if I'm using laser, I shouldn't say however, if I'm using laser layout with my robotic total station or my RPT 600, that's fine. I can hit that with the laser, but if I don't have use of a laser in my instrument and I want to use the prism pole, um, having that point on the face of the column isn't going to work for me. Uh, I'm going to have to do an offset. So to do an offset, I'll go back into create and this time I'll go to plan and I want to do a six inch offset from the center face of that column. And that's pretty easy to get to because if the column is 12 inches, 18 inches, it doesn't matter. I can divide that measurement in half, find the exact center of that column, and then from there I can use a T-square or something to do maybe, for example, a six inch offset. So I'll go to the input form button and I'll punch in six inches, okay? And I'll come back out and I'll click on this point here. I'll do CP and it's putting it to in the direction of down and I can rotate that into the proper direction that I want it to be straight out from the column. So I'll go ahead and create that point and I'll come down here and I'll do the same thing. That's finding two points so I'll select the one that I want. I'll go ahead and hit create. Move over to my next column here. I don't want it to go that direction so I'll make it this direction. I'll hit create. I'll come over here create you kind of get the idea it's pretty much rinse and repeat at this point so I'll click there and then rotate this one down in the direction that I want it and hit create all right so now I've just not only created some points on the center face of the column but I've also given myself a six inch offset from the center face of the column so I've got a couple options when I get out there onto the job site all right so there's my control points the next thing I need to do now is I can figure out what am I going to lay out okay so if I zoom in, I see some things here. I'm guessing these are light fixtures. If I go up to the legend, uh, indeed they are, fluorescent strip fixture, fixture uh, reference electrical. Okay, so now that I know what it is, uh, I'm going to put some points on here. Now, I could do, again, we'll go back to create into the uh, from model. And I could do a couple different things on this, but I'm going to do... Um, Let's do endpoints of lines, and I could do all four corners, but I really only need two because these two points are going to let me know what direction that light strip is going and the size of it as well. So I've got two points there. Here's another one. Okay, and you get the idea. I could go down and, and, and hit all of them if I wanted to. I'm going to go to the input form button. I don't want to call it CP for control point. I'm going to call it LF for light fixture. We'll start with the number one. If one's taken, the software will pick up where it left off. This is a light fixture. And the layer. Um, I want to put on electrical, which I don't have, so I'll create it. 
so there's an electrical layer I can come back out here and hit create now I've got four points that I can use to lay out some light fixtures maybe I want to lay out a wall so here is a wall and a lot of times we like to lay out the center line of the wall and then the guys can use the construction documents to figure out how big that wall is or what size it is etc so to do that I'm going to do midpoints and I'm going to select this midpoint here this one here now I could go straight through all the way down to the end but sometimes it's kind of nice to know where the openings are so that way if you need to frame a rough opening you know exactly what size it is so there's some points on that wall that gives me a pretty good idea of where that's going so again back to the input form it's not a light fixture it's going to be W1 for wall 1 um, and we'll call this center line so that way the guy doesn't think it's a, a front face or a back face or anything like that and as far as layer goes I'll give it a wall layer and then I can go ahead and hit create and there we go now I've got some walls that I can lay out so now it's just a matter of rinse and repeat okay I can go and lay out different light fixtures I can lay out some of the duct work I could possibly go and lay out maybe some of these curtain walls or some steel cross bracing or whatever it is that I need to lay out I simply select that geometry and create those points so I hope that gives you a little bit of an insight of how you can bring in a PDF uh, file into Trimble Fieldlink and actually use it to create points to do your layout you can do this on the tablet in the field you can do this using Trimble Fieldlink office uh, in the trailer on your your desktop computer or back in your your CAD department um, so hopefully we've given you some additional options that you can use for layout and not necessarily have to be a computer-aided design expert